finite Herbron logic is that subset of Herbron logic in which the Herbron base is finite. In order to guarantee a finite Herbron base, we must restrict our cells to signatures in which there are at most finitely many object constants and no function constants whatsoever. One interesting feature of FHL, finite Herbron logic, is that it's expressively equivalent to propositional logic. For any FHL language, we can produce a pairing between the ground relational sentences in that language and the proposition constants in a propositional logic language. And then, given this correspondence, for any set of arbitrary sentences in our FHL language, there is a corresponding set of sentences in the language of PL, such that any FHL truth assignment that satisfies our FHL sentences agrees with the corresponding PL truth assignment applied to the PL sentences. The procedure for transforming our FHL sentences to PL has multiple steps, but each step is really easy. First, we convert to prenex form, then we ground the result, and finally we rewrite in propositional logic. So let's take a look at these steps in turn. The sentence is in prenex form, if and only if, first of all, it's closed, and all of the quantifiers are on the outside of all of the logical operators. Now, for example, the first sentence here is in prenex form. The two sentences at the bottom are not. The first fails because the quantifiers are inside of logical operators. The second fails because the sentence contains a free occurrence of the variable y. Uh, converting a set of sentences to a logically equivalent set in prenex form is really easy. First, we rename the variables in different quantified sentences to eliminate any possible duplicates. So in the example shown here, uh, we rename the variable y in the second disjunct. In the second step, we apply quantifier distribution rules to move quantifiers outside of logical operators. Here we move the two quantifiers uh, out, out. Finally, we universally quantify any free variables in our sentence. In this case, the variable x is free in the sentence, and so we add a universal quantifier for x. Once we have our se se sentences in prenex form, we compute the grounding. Uh, the procedure is described here. We start with our initial set delta of sentences, and we incrementally build up our grounding uh, gamma. On each step, we process the sentence in delta using the rules uh, shown here. Uh, the procedure terminates when delta becomes empty. Set gamma at that point is the grounding of the input. The first rule covers the case when the sentence being processed is ground. In this case, we remove the sentence from delta and add it to gamma. Okay, let's look at an example. Suppose we have a language with just two object constants, a and b. And suppose we have the set of sentences shown here. We have one ground sentence, one universally quantified sentence, and one existentially quantified sentence. All are in prenex form. On the first step, we remove the ground sentence p of a from delta and add it to gamma. On the second step, we remove the universally quantified sentence from delta and add all of its instances to delta. Note that we don't add the instances directly to gamma in general because they might contain nested quantifiers, which then have to be removed as well. Here, however, that's not the case, and on the next two steps, we simply move the two instances to gamma. At this point, we have just the existential sentence to process. We remove it from delta and replace it with disjunction of the target with one disjunct for each constant in our language. And then finally, we remove this ground sentence to gamma, and we're done. Once we have a grounding gamma, we replace each ground relational sentence in gamma by a propositional constant. Resulting sentences are all in propositional logic, and the set is equivalent to the sentences in the original delta, this, this delta we've um, in that any FHL truth assignment that satisfies our FHL sentence agrees with the corresponding propositional logic truth assignment applied to the propositional logic sentences. For example, let's represent the FHL sentence P of A with a proposition PA. Let's represent P of B with PB. And let's represent Q of A with QA. Let's represent Q of B with QB. So with this correspondence, we can represent the sentences in our grounding 
with the propositional logic sentences shown here at the bottom. Since the question of unsatisfiability for propositional logic is decidable, and then the question of unsatisfiability for FHL is also decidable. Since logical entailment and unsatisfiability are correlated, we also know that the question of logical entailment for FHL is decidable. One other consequence of this correspondence uh, between FHL and PL is that, like PL, FHL is compact. That is, every unsatisfiable set of sentences contains a finite subset that is unsatisfiable. It's important because it assures us that we can demonstrate the unsatisfiability of a set of sentences uh, with just a finite set of sentences. Also, as we shall see in the next lesson, uh, logical entailment can be demonstrated with finite proofs.